Today we are going to discuss isolation and utilization of caffeine from medicine plant. So this caffeine is nothing but an purine alkaloid which is present in the nature in an abundant amount. Specifically, they are distributed in these four plants in a considerable higher amount. Tea leaves, coffee beans, coca fruits and guarana. Guarana contain highest amount of caffeine that is 4 to 7 percent followed by tea then coffee and then coca. So the tea has been introduced to the world by Chinese emperor Shen Yu. And later on the coffee from South African region it has been coming to the existence and it also become one of the popular beverages uh, which contain the caffeine. So this uh, effect of the coffee has fascinated this French chemist Perry Jean Eric uh, and who has attempted to isolate the first time the pure fatal constant present in the coffee that is caffeine. So caffeine is a purine base or it is also known as xanthine derivative which is a 137 trimethyl xanthine. Before going to the isolation we should know some physical chemical properties. You will be very surprised that here the caffeine he shows wide solubilities. What it means? It means the, it is soluble in water as well as it is soluble in chloroform, alcohol, acetone as well as diethyl. The solubility in the water has been increased as the temperature increases. So at a normal temperature, at a normal room temperature it has 22 mg, while at boiling water it is in 670 mg per ml. So it is very highly soluble in water as well as Chloroform, this having a melting point is 235 to 238 degrees Celsius. So caffeine has, a, has an another property that is what we can call as a sublimation property. And this sublimation property of caffeine can be utilized for the separation of caffeine from the medicinal plant. So the dried powder can be kept into the sublimation chamber and subjected for heating. So at a an an melting point of caffeine, they start to convert from solid to the gas. And these solid when convert to the gas and in the sublimation chamber when it is uh, in come in contact with the cold surface it is called as fingers in sublimation chamber and it start to crystal out and thus one can be one can isolate very easily caffeine from so medicinal uh, caffeine from medicinal herb by using the sublimation technique. Another method is uh, the old method is known as Toss Otto method. So Tosoto method uh, and the extraction of caffeine from the tea leaves uh, for what it has been designed. So as we know that tea leaf contain the uh, caffeine along with the other chemical constant that is tannin. And uh, the tannin also shows the solubility in alcohol and water as well as caffeine also shows the solubility in water and alcohol. So for that purpose there are some manipulation in the steps have been carried out to remove the tannins and later on to extract out the caffeine. So here tea powder is extracted with or boiled with the water for 30 minutes. So what it becomes an aqueous extract subject to filtration going to get an aqueous extract. So aqueous extract contain the alkaloids and tannins because tannins as I said alkaloid in the boiling water caffeine is highly soluble as well as tannins are also soluble in boiling water. So to remove the tannins here excess amount of lead acid has been added. So lead acetate is a metal reagent which lead to the precipitation of tannin as a lead tannin. But in this case we don't know how much amount of tannin is present into the solution. So for that purpose here excess amount of lead acetate is added. Excess amount means what even the lead acetate has been added even though the precipitation has ceased out or stopped. And this precipitate has been subjected to filtration and this after precipitation we are going to get a clear solution along with the excess amount of lead. So this excess amount of lead which want to be removed, so for that removal the S2S gas has been passed. So S2S gas convert this lead acetate into the lead sulphide which is become a precipitate in a solution and this one can easily separate it by means of filtration technique. So uh, after the filtration in these two steps the tannins has been removed as well as whatever the excess amount of lead has been added that is also being removed by means of s 2 gas. Now it contains the aqueous extract as we have been mentioned already earlier these are uh, only in the water alkaloids and tannin gets solubilized. So in aqueous extract now the alkaloids are only present so, along with the other chemical constants which are not therapeutically important it, what, it may be the carbohydrates or what we can say sugar, some amino acids, or certain amounts of pigments. So to remove it from that, this uh, aqueous extract is partitioned with the chloroform three times. Again, this partition because this partition lead to the separation of 
proteins, amino acid uh, from the um, caffeine. As seen earlier that caffeine shows white solubility that is soluble in water as well as soluble in al chloroform. So here in last stage of the addition of chloroform, uh, the caffeine has been transferred from aqueous portion to the chloroform portion and one will get in purified caffeine. And thus one can get in crystals, needle shaped crystals of the caffeine. Another method is what uh, here is called a solid extraction method. So as we know that the tea powder when boiled with the water, it gets uh, solubilized the alkaloid along with the tannins. As here we know uh, in the aqueous extract, alkaloids in tannin get accumulated, but this tannin has a limited solubility here. So tannins are only soluble in water and alcohol. While well, tannins are insoluble in chloroform, while well, alkaloid we have seen in before two slides, this caffeine is soluble in water as well as diethyl ether chloroform. So the aqueous extract when subjected for partition or solvent washing or partition with the chloroform, so tannin will not transfer into the chloroform, while well, only the alkaloids will transfer from aqueous extract to the chloroform, and thus we will uh, get in two layers of partition, chloroform layer and aqueous layer. And these chloroform layer when you, when it is subjected for evaporation, we are going to get in crystals, needle shaped crystals of the caffeine. So this is another method. And the, in the aqueous extract, the tannin get accumulated. So uses as we are very much aware that C it is a CNS stimulant, so it having effect on CNS. It is also act as an agent decongestant, and thus being utilized in a complication produced because of the uh, accumulation of the water into the sinus, it is called as sinusitis. It is also being used by athletes for a better performance or a better performance. That is dosed on uh, doping in the doping study, it might be found in some athletes so as to perform the uh, better into the running as well as weightlifting. Then, combination it is in, used along with the combination uh, with analgesic agents. So, being a nasal decongestant, it can be used uh, along with the paracetamol, which is analgesic. Thus, it can give a better result in the sinusitis as well as in common cold. This pharmacological effect on the CNS, heart, renal, gastrointestinal, and respiratory system. It also having in the renal system, it yeah, having a diuretic effect. So, one of the very popular brand from India that is Sinaris from Centaur Pharmaceuticals. Uh, it contains the paracetamol along with the caffeine. So this is an antihistamine molecule. This is caffeine. So it can be useful in sinus congestion and headache. So this headache is taken care by the paracetamol. Sinus congestion is taken care by caffeine.